My next guest up tonight is my featured act. Uh, as I said, he's an all-around entertainer from an act, a comedian, TV and uh, radio talk show host. So let's give him a late night welcome and make him feel right at home for the one and only John Mulrooney. Johnny P, everybody. How about here for Johnny P? The Johnny P Show. It's great to be here in Johnny P's refrigerator on Staten, Italy. <laughs> so, my mom lives here on Staten, Italy. I, I drove uh, from uh, Brooklyn two days ago. I just got here. My God. <laughs> And can anyone co-sign a loan? Because I need to get back over the Verrazano Bridge. What is, what is it now? $80 for the Verrazano Bridge? Are they kidding me? Between that and the Gothels? They forgot, you know, the MTA that they're dealing with New Yorkers. They're going to get to a point where they're going to raise that toll just $1 too much, and you're going to see a string of rowboats under the bridges. <laughs> F you. I am not paying for that toll. I don't care what anybody says. And of course, one jackass from New Jersey who'll be stuck in the middle with one paddle in the water going, I know it's around here somewhere. <laughs> go. But from Brooklyn, big New York Irish family, seven of us, three mothers, four fathers. <laughs> I got uh, all my nieces and nephews out here. One nephew just went into the service. How about a hand for me? He made officer candidate school. <laughs> my other nephew is NYPD on a job. Thank you. My brother just retired from the NYPD. 22 years wow. of service. Well, he says retired. They say caught on camera. I don't know. It's a, it really depends on who you're talking to. But my God, driving out here, it was literally like two hours. And I keep passing these signs that say, I'm thinking, you know, okay, there's, there's something going on because there's uh, men working, men working, men working. Where? <laughs> Where are they? 20 miles I've been going. I haven't seen one man working out there. There's guys leaning on shovels. There's people talking by the cones. I haven't seen anybody working. And I don't know if you know this, but they had w these women's right groups that were up in arms over the signs because it said men working. They were like really pissed off about this. They said, hey, wait a minute. There's men and women working out there, you know, so those signs need to be changed. This is a big deal. They have to see people working. There are people working out there. Have you ever seen the women that do road work? <laughs> we could have kept the first sign. Maybe just added ugly over the top. <laughs> Shut up, what are you, a road worker? <laughs> be quiet. And you can't tell people from New York, you can't put up signs that say, slow down, men working. This is not a precautionary measure. This becomes a game to them, <laughs> right? They're driving along and they're like, hey, Marie, watch this. I'm going to get really close to the guy with the broom over here. Just watch, watch. Oh, I just clipped him. All right, get off over here. I'm going to go around. Be careful. And then he gets up. Hey, he broke my mirror. Go back around, that jackass. A little bit about me, I am uh, single, <clears throat> no kids. That's because I always use protection and never give my real name. <laughs> Marriage is not an easy gig, although I've dated quite a bit. Uh, you know, in New York, you get a little bit of everything. Dated uh, Asian women, uh, African-American women, uh, Jewish girls. Jewish girls will date the goyim, that's me. That means a non-Jew, because they will not marry the goyim, because you know what they say, once you go goy, oh boy. <laughs> but <laughs> Thank you very much, a Jewish girl in the audience. But there was a, a woman I dated from Manhattan Beach, Brooklyn. We went, went out for like two years, much to the chagrin of her Hebrew parents. But as a courtesy to her and her family, I learned everybody's first name in Hebrew, which is a very difficult language. It's very, very rough on the, on the, on the throat. And in fact, in, in, in Hebrew, her first name was <laughs> In English, it was Audrey. <laughs> she had a younger brother. <laughs> in English, his name was Tim. <laughs> But the uh, but l at least the, at least Jews have good food. Uh, I wish I could say the same about Johnny P's green room. He was bragging about it the whole way here. But I got to tell you something: bologna and cheese should never be on a raisin bagel. <laughs> <laughs> I know all the Italians just went, "Oh my God, what? 
who put bologna and cheese on a raisin bagel? Because some American is eating it going, this is really good. I can't believe I've had bologna and cheese on a raisin bagel. See, because being of Irish descent, and I don't know if descent is coming in your direction, <laughs> we know good cooking. We may not be great at it, because, you know, apparently, you know, in Ireland was not on any known spice trade route. You know, Sunday dinner at my house was never any big surprise. It was like, oh, come on in, you're just in time. Your Uncle Tommy boiled a pot of steam. <laughs> Oh, nobody boils a pot of steam like your Uncle Tommy. <laughs> this week he added a little salt. <laughs> but if you want to know where the good Italian food is, you just ask somebody who's Irish, because we can tell you that. We know where the good Italian restaurants are, like Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for moaning, because I cannot believe that in New York City, with the exception of Italy, New York City has got to have the best Italian food ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. And they open up an olive garden. <laughs> I like to go into the olive garden and make up the names of things that don't exist, but sound Italian, just to confuse the Mexican waiter. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna send them. This guy comes over and I'm gonna go. You know, let me get an uh, an order of the uh, uh, prostitute di potana. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy's writing it down. You want the prostitute di potana? Because <laughs> you know that order is going into the kitchen to the Chinese cook <laughs> who's pulling it off the rack. On who ordered that? <laughs> who ordered prostitute di potana? What he say? Sweet or sour? <laughs> I love how I threw the little prostitute di patana, and everybody in here knows what that is because we're on Staten Island. But the people at home are going, what does it mean? I don't I'm, I, but honestly, I'm glad you're laughing because it brings me to a point I'd like to make that Johnny brought up at the beginning of the show. He showed that little clip with... Uh, Ice Cube. But the point I'm making is, or the point you made, and I, and I speak to this point, and I think it's, it's a great point. You know, there's a myth that is perpetuated by our spiritual and political leaders that there's strength in our diversity. Have you heard this? I think it's nonsense. Strength in our diversity. No, there's not. Diversity is inherently weak, hence the root of the what word. Divide, division, divorce, right? There's strength in one thing, strength in unity. Okay, we have to stop looking at our differences and start looking at what we have in common. Differences are what separates us. If we want to be unified as a people, we have to be single-minded in purpose. That's pretty basic stuff, right? Does that make sense to everybody here? Thank you. Thank you for, thank you. That is why white people and black people, we need to get together and get the Puerto Ricans out of here. I mean, they're the ones that are screwing it up for everybody. <laughs> and that's the point I'm gonna make. You guys have been great. Thank you very much, everybody. Hope I get stabbed for the last joke on the road. Yeah. Bing, bing, bing. My man. I stole Round three. Go ahead, do it again. Round I two. Stole this, I stole this from the bakery when I had to wait too long. Bread, please. <laughs> is that really where you got? I was going to ask you where you got that. Yeah, belt. bakery, and I got one from the principal's office from when I was in high school. And this is from when you were uh, sent to jail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I took it from the judge. <laughs> what is, what's, what, what's with the gavel? With this? Because it's like order my studio. That would be pretty funny if it, on the way out after you got sentenced, you actually <laughs> stole the gavel from the judge. That would be the ultimate theft. I can't right? say too many illegal activities that I did do in, back in the day, but you know.